Good evening and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Angie Coons. And I'm Jamie Lee Reichert. Mountain State students as well as tourists visiting West Virginia can look forward to some new housing options that will benefit their pockets. This will also be beneficial to Beckley residents. Rachel Lucas has more. An estimated 2 million homes await foreclosure in America this year, making 2010 one of the largest buyer's markets since the Great Depression. For sale signs can be seen more and more through local neighborhoods in West Virginia as well as the United States, making the economy look slightly glum. But one single mom in Beckley is turning glum to glam. Christine Rasnick, a single mom with numerous business and marketing work experience, has another name to add to her title. She now works as a real estate developer after starting her own vacation rental property. Rasnick began by purchasing a rundown home on her street, which she then renovated and turned into a vacation property that is targeted toward out-of-town skiers and rafters. She has started from the ground up on this project and has remodeled the house from top to bottom, piece by piece. This winter marked the first open season for Journey's End, her vacation home, which was booked almost every weekend all season. While for sale signs are on the rise, Christine Rasnick could be seeing some sold signs in her future. Journey's End has done so well that further real estate expansions as well as the purchase of new properties may become available. Rasnick says that her business is turning from strictly vacation homes to corporate and student housing as well. The third largest higher education institute in the state of West Virginia is still on the rise. Cindy Alexander, the executive vice president of the administration at Mountain State, says that Mountain State is searching for more housing options. While they are primarily a commuter school, Alexander says the need for housing is becoming more in demand. Recruiters for Mountain State are already searching for more housing as well as undergoing plans to build new dorms. Recognizing this demand, Rasnick plans to prepare housing especially for these students. For more information on vacation homes available in Beckley, West Virginia or Journey's End, visit www.journeysend.com. For WMLT News, I'm Rachel Lucas in Beckley. At the age of 98, last Tuesday died Dorothy Height. Height was a leading female voice along with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the civil rights movements for the past 40 years. Dr. Height has been in serious condition for weeks and she has passed while hospitalized in the Howard University Hospital in Washington, D.C. Dorothy Height received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1994 from President Bill Clinton. With our world striving for more, Apple has reached to the top. Taylor Shea has more. On April 3rd, 2010, Apple released their newest and latest piece of technology, the iPad. When I'm on a plane, I can sit here and watch a movie, I can read a book, I can play a game, I can do all sorts of things entertainment-wise and everything to pass that time while I'm on a flight. Um, when you're on a trip to the beach or something, just sitting somewhere, you know, sitting at the house or something, nothing on TV, I can pull up Netflix, find a movie I want to watch, sit there and watch a movie. With a society so dependent on technology, the iPad can make everyday life inside and outside of the classroom a touch easier. It's so much quicker to use an iPad where you have full access to the internet, full access to documents, full access to software that you have a lot of on a computer, but it's right there in this small form factor machine. Uh, take uh, students, for example, carrying around their backpacks. You know, I mean, they have, <laughs> I have back problems from when I was in college because I was carrying around 200 pounds worth of books. And this thing weighs one and a half pounds. And I have every one of my books in there. And that's something here at Concord that we've been trying to do is more and more getting rid of paper. Paper is extremely expensive. Digital is not. For the amount of things that you can do, $500 price tag is not bad. With the iPad being the newest gadget on the market, I got some feedback from some college students about Apple's new product. The iPad's pretty neat um, from what I hear. Um, it seems like it probably wouldn't be very practical as like a, a computer. It might be good for research or um, playing games or you know, surfing the web, but probably not very practical for uh, like maybe everyday use as a computer. I don't like the iPad because it's too big. It doesn't fit my pocket. I'd rather have my iPhone. It doesn't fold and has no legs, and therefore I'd rather have a laptop. I just think it's far unnecessary and too expensive. 
With Apple releasing new innovations almost every four years, what other surprises do they have for their consumers? Reporting in Athens, West Virginia, I'm Taylor Shea, WMLT News. Just recently, scientists solved a mystery that occurred in the Israel desert in the early 20th century. British pilots were the first to spot the weird kite-like lines in the desert of Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. The lines are made of low stone walls, sometimes situated at an angle. At some spots in the desert, these lines form chains up to 40 miles long. Scientists believe that after years of research, that the kites were built as ancient hunting techniques, followed by the paths of gazelles and other desert herd animals. President Barack Obama will visit Beckley this Sunday for a memorial service dedicated to the 29 miners killed in the Massey Energy coal mining explosion. Vice President Joe Biden and West Virginia Governor Manchin will join President Obama in the service. The Massey Upper Big Branch mine accident was the most deadly mining disaster in nearly 40 years. The service will include musical performances and prayers. President Obama will deliver a eulogy for the 29 miners, honoring the brave lives that were lost. The public is invited to attend on a first-come, first-served basis. Stay tuned for more WMLT news after the break. And for details about how to end animal cruelty. Welcome back to WMLT News. It's estimated that over 7 million dogs and cats enter animal shelters each year. And over half of them are euthanized. While some people pay hundreds of dollars for pet store animals, thousands of abandoned animals are dying each day. Mercer County Animal Shelter adopts and cares for stray dogs and cats every day. Though most are euthanized before they have the chance to find a home. Some of these animals are abused, but often become the most loving and loyal types of pets. Though most people prefer puppies and kittens, grown dogs and cats are often already house trained and used to being around people and children. The caring workers at Mercer County Animal Shelter plead with future pet owners to save money and lives by adopting from shelters. Filming for the new James Bond movie has been suspended because of financial trouble of the distributing company MGM. Producers Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Broccoli say that production has been halted because MGM could not find a buyer for the company that has estimated $3.7 billion in debt. The movie known as Bond 23 was scheduled to be released in 2011, but with the production halt, it is unknown when the movie will be released. The volcano that recently erupted in Iceland shut down major airports all across Europe. On April 14th, the volcano erupted, throwing ash all across the northern part of the continent. Some European airports reopened on April 20th as the ash began to clear. Passengers in many airports cheered as it was announced that the some flights were going to resume. It is estimated that airline industry has lost over a billion dollars and stranded thousands of travelers. The Eurocontinental Air Traffic Agency expects just under half of the 27,000 flights to take off, with close to normal air traffic resuming by this weekend. 
The Upper Guyandot Watershed Association is working with the Winding Gulf Restoration Organization to restore a historic coal camp baseball field in Helen. Rachel Lucas has more on the efforts. The Upper Guyandot Watershed Association is working toward restoring a historic coal camp baseball field in Helen, West Virginia. The project started five years ago. The restoration could be getting a $250,000 home run from the Pepsi Refresh Contest online. Randolph Greer, president of the Winding Gulf Restoration Organization, says that although there aren't many people in Helen now, the town was highly populated when it was mining coal. It's hard to believe now that there were thousands upon thousands of people who lived in this area. For the past five years, Greer has played a key role in restoring the historic Coal Camp baseball field just feet away from the town's only post office. While driving by the field, you may notice that behind all of the brush piles, an old railroad track and stream lay beside it, but there are no signs of any mound, bases, or a diamond. Although this open field may not look like much now, Helen residents who grew up here say it's more than what meets the eye. I'm actually standing on what used to be home plate of the historic Coal Camp baseball field. But I remember coming here as about a four or five year old and they had bleachers uh, set up in three positions here and we sat in the bleachers and watched a league ball game of some kind. Restoring this field will make it more than just a historic site. The baseball field is planned to be regulation size so that little league teams from Helen and Beckley can play here. It's a nice field. It's very solid. It never floods, even though it has some mud puddles here and there. This is a field that can easily be restored. Lily Kay, the development coordinator for the Upper Gondot Watershed Association, says her organization decided to partner up with the Winding Gulf Restoration Organization in restoring the field. All improvements to the field thus far are from donations, so both groups are looking for another major source of income for the project. Kay says that she found out about the Pepsi Refresh Contest, which is a new grant that Pepsi is offering. This year they're giving away $1.3 million to different communities, and we'd like to be one of them. This project is up against nearly 300 other projects nationwide and has been accepted into the competition for the second straight month. The competition is based off of online votes that anyone can log on to and vote for daily. Kay says their project sits at about the 140th spot, which is about halfway to first. The main thing is if you care about southern West Virginia, if you care about the coal fields, if you're proud of your heritage, please vote for this idea. It encompasses, you know, the community bonds and the heritage that the southern coal fields really have. The competition ends March 31st and the winner will be announced April 1st. For WMLT News, I'm Rachel Lucas in Helen. Chinese hackers stole a major Google program. The Times published a story on the issue, which was focusing on the fact that this might be a politically charged issue. The stolen system called Gaia governed emailed access to the services that Google offers to businesses, government agencies, and schools online. Make sure you turn, tune back in two weeks for more WMLT news. I'm Angie Coons. From me and the whole WMLT crew, thank you for joining us again tonight. I'm Jamie Lee Reichert.